welcome back to Dinghy Cruising with Trim. I'm Josh and today we're going to look at how to make a micro power station. Well, in order to build one of these, you're going to have to learn a couple of things. This video is in four parts. First part, I'm going to teach you a little bit about Watt's Law. Stop yawning, you do need it. Second part, I think I look at uh, components, bits and pieces. Uh, third part is the assembly and then we'll go back out on the boat and see what the final result was. Let's go. Using Watt's Law is super helpful in uh, designing your battery capacity and knowing what kind of solar panels you're going to require. The simple uh, Watt's Law formula is power in watts is equal to your voltage times your current in amps. Uh, but what we also need to do is bring in this factor of time which we uh, put in as hours and that's going to give us watt hours and you can see here that's what we're going to be uh, calculating today. So I know my VHF runs on 5 volts, uh, best information I could find it charges at 1 amp so there's my 5 times 1 and I'm only going to run that charge for 1 hour that gives me 5 watt hours. You can see where this is going folks. Next piece of information I found on the phone battery is that it's 1350 milliamp hours. So we've already got the hour there. We don't need to do that again. Milliamps, we can get rid of that and just put our decimal point in on our third decimal place. So it's 5 by 1.35 amps to get our watt hours, 6.75. Our GoPro, same deal, found the info on the battery itself at 720. So let's put that and we get 8.6. Bilge pump, 12 volt. Look up the specs. It uh, pulls 3.7 amps when it's working, but I only need it for six minutes to empty my boat. So I'm only going to multiply by a tenth of that, where six minutes is a tenth of that hour. Uh, so 0.37 amps for my six minute pump, and that's going to give me 4.4. We tally those up, we get 24.8 watt hours. Uh, I've gone ahead and bought a 10 amp hour battery. And if we make that into watt hours, we get, so times 12, I get 120 watts. So I'm going to go with a 120 watt hour battery. It is easily four days worth and a little bit extra between charges. And I think that's sized appropriately. You may be able to find more reputable uh, suppliers of your different components. I did this as cheap as possible. Uh, one, because I like staying married, and two, uh, I would like to retain ownership of my credit card. So I've done this at a budget, and I've probably, I have to work a little bit harder in order to use components that uh, I have to adapt myself. So you may find better components and make this whole process a lot easier on yourself. But if you should uh, venture into eBay and perhaps even Amazon looking for flexible solar panels, which is what I've used, you'll be uh, amazed at how powerful they purport to be. Uh, these ones, uh, each one of these, these, there's two there that I've connected, have purported to be uh, 250 watts. Now, there is no way on God's green earth that that could possibly be the case. Uh, but by scrolling through the specifications you look for a couple of key pieces of evidence most reputable panels uh, and panel providers will have this information available for you either on their website and it's also on the back of the panel itself what you're looking for is your max power voltage in this case 17.48 volts tells me that this is uh, for charging 12 volt systems and the max power current 5.71 amps is its uh, maximum output. Multiply those two together, we get very close to the 100 watts that it says at the top. And that gives me the numbers I need when calculating my charge rates and regulator size. In order for a 12 volt panel to achieve 250 watts, it's got to punch out 
like 20 amps and quite simply a panel this size what is it they're about 250 by 400 millimeters they're not punching out 20 amps so the other components we use for this build are uh, what they call an ammo box although in australia that's weird because we don't really do that um, but you can get these in um, bcf anaconda other places this is a solar controller there are two different kinds out there on the market there's this pwm uh, pulse width modulation you might like to call it old tech and the more modern ones are mppt multi-point something tracking i can't remember um, and they are new tech and you'll pay about uh, two or three times the price for those uh, they are better don't get me wrong uh, but like I said, I, I built this to a budget. You do need one of these between your panel and your battery, which we'll take a look at in a moment. This is the regulator that came with the miraculous 250 watt panels. Um, it won't charge uh, lithium ion batteries. So it, it, it's junk basically. Here's our battery. As you saw from our um, usage budget, 10 amp hour seemed plenty for me. 10 year lifespan on these, uh, lithium iron phosphate. They've got their own battery management system built in. So in there is a circuit board that covers uh, low voltage and will cut itself out. Uh, over voltage, it will disconnect and all those sorts of things. And these are the plugs I bought. Uh, I had to go AliExpress and, and import them basically to get them at a reasonable price, but they're a great little product. So they have the screw locking thread. They have the plug with its own captive nut on the back for inserting into the box. And then of course, O-rings, positive locking. Has a, it has a gland in the back that clamps down on the cable. Let's look at cable. Cable can be quite expensive, but one little trick that I've picked up is to just use your, um, your household flex cable. Now I use the uh, two and a half millimeter stuff. So that's the the thicker, the thicker profile stuff. And then we pack that in so it doesn't roll around. EVO foam, there's nothing it can't do. That's nice and compact. I've just put it in the wrong way around. Well, now we've got our battery around the right way. I've made this little piece of timber. It's nice to keep things organized and have things to uh, a place to mount everything. Now, wiring up these regulators is ridiculously easy. Don't be afraid. You just got to bear a little bit of the end of the wire. It tells you what it wants you to do. Here we have uh, solar array input one. There's a second one on this particular unit. They don't. They, sometimes they only have the one. Uh, the next thing is your battery. Uh, with your battery, make sure you put uh, an inline fuse in it. The fuse size, I'm a little bit rusty on that. I, I went with 10 amps, thinking that this was a, a 10 amp regulator. If you're an electrical engineer, please, yes, and I'm talking to you, Pete, please let me know uh, about how to size a fuse properly. That would be good. And our last one is the load. The load is all the stuff we're going to run off it. You recall that the end of the regulator had the load. So this is all our devices we want to use. So it comes through and into this screw junction block. That just makes it easy to connect all the other bits and pieces. One device connected is, you can see here, the 12 volt uh, cigarette plug. That's good for 12 volt out. I've got two more lines going straight down the bottom there to come out at some 12 volt outlets and this cable you can see here was that solar array in and it's coming down to this inlet and of course i've labeled them in case somebody else needs to use that so there we have solar in i've got two 12 volt solar outs there are slightly smaller plugs so i can't get anything mixed up here and that's the simple wiring. Now, this is probably the trickiest thing I did. As you know, bravely bought cheap panels and was happy to modify them. 
They came with this uh, two USB chargers and a 12 volt charger uh, cable. Um, that means it's got a step down transformer for five volts. It's got its own blocking diode and all of that. So what I did was remove that. I didn't want any of that and I want to be able to waterproof this as best I can by filling it full of silicon or epoxy at a later date. So what that means is I had to, let me get a pointer. These have these little ribbons coming out of the solar panel and I bought these junction boxes in again at the same time I bought those plugs. So there's my positive terminal there, uh, negative terminal there, it's all soldered. And I had to put this uh, 40 volt 3 amp um, diode in. Now that uh, allows current to bypass it if the panel is shaded. So when you're building these sorts of things, there's probably three main types of connectors that you're going to need to deal with. One is the blade type connection, and uh, that is on the battery. The, your battery may come with a, a bolt-on type connection. The other type are the screw type connectors, just requiring a Phillips head screwdriver. And the third type is where you might have to actually solder. Solder is actually not too difficult. And I'll show you a couple of quick tricks that'll get you up and running. Once you learn it, it's actually deeply satisfying. A little safety to consider. Uh, even with those two solar panels not connected to the battery box, they are still generating current. So when you are working on them, have them face down so that they, they, no light can land on them, otherwise you will get sparking. Similarly, uh, disconnect your battery when you're doing any of the uh, components in there. And if you're soldering, wear something on your eyes. Uh, a, a piece of wire flicking hot solder in your eye, it's going to make all of this less impressive. So soldering is not difficult. A uh, couple of key things. Make sure the ends of your wire are very clean. If you've got an old piece of wire, cut that off and take off the insulation. Second thing I do, I use a 40 watt soldering iron. Gives me plenty of uh, heat and very, very quickly. Next thing is to what they call tinning the components you want to join. It's uh, adding solder to the wire and the components separately first so that when you come to join them, you only need to hold the two pieces together and apply heat and the two blobs of solder will go together. You do that uh, and you've got a connection that's not going to get corrosion in it like you will with the screw connections and potentially even the blade connections. So worth a bit of uh, time trying to learn to do it. If you can borrow a soldering iron, you're only going to need it for about five or ten minutes. So there you have it. After about four hours charging out sailing, we've gone up to about 14 volts. It has worked surprisingly well. I'll try and get a ammeter on it to work out the exact amp output, but it's certainly charging just in general sailing. Even if half the panel is uh, shaded, the other one is working. So this has been a success. We're gonna say goodbye now, and uh, we'll see you again later. Bye-bye.